March the 19th, 2021. Guys, you're looking at the clearest National Weather Service map we've seen in quite a while, and that's a good thing. It's a little cooler here in the southeast, but mostly what you see is over in um, higher elevations in California, some winter weather advisories, things like that, and a few wind warnings across the nation, a couple of flood watches and warnings. And in Alaska, you got some winter weather, gale warnings offshore and Hawaii. You've got the same thing, wind and gale problems, uh, marine uh, watches and warnings out both east and west coast and along the uh, Gulf Coast here from uh, the Florida Panhandle over into central Louisiana. Again, one of the clearest maps we've seen in a long time. And this cool air has pushed a little further south than most of the uh, predictions that we saw in the last week. Now let's look at uh, pretty much the northern hemisphere as far as the North American continent side satellite. And what we're seeing is very clear skies. And you can also tell where this Arctic vortex is dipping. If you remember yesterday, as I was pointing out uh, where the tornadoes were getting their energy with all the uh, airflow out of the Gulf of Mexico, very warm and moist air, this vortex has dipped all the almost all the way to South Florida. And if you look at this image here along this line, right there, and there's, you'll see a line of thunderstorms. There's, remember, there's no warnings or watches out or anything. It's a very thin line, but that's the where the cold air has pushed south and met the warm air that we've been enjoying for the last few weeks since that ice storm. And notice all the flow is offshore all the way to that point. We'll pull that up and look at it a little closer. And here it's a lot easier to see. All the flow is now reversed from yesterday going from south to north. Now it's opposite. This is that vortex and this is the scattering of the light clouds. You may be getting a few sprinkles here along the Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee line up in that uh, area right there in these higher blue clouds. But there's no storm warnings out and this would be very light indeed. Now, what, one good thing about it, notice the clearing line in the top left of this image here. It's coming down through Arkansas and through Texas. It's moving pretty fast. So you guys in Memphis, uh, in that area, North Mississippi, it won't be long. You're going to see some sun peeking through and warming this day up somewhat. And uh, by the afternoon, this is going to move south. So a lot of us in this area is going to get a break from these several days of rains and tornadoes and get maybe get some good sunshine and dry it out the um again the one of the main problems that we had this year so far we've had the ice storm of course that got the southeast and did a lot of crop damage not just infrastructure to the power lines and windmills and then we see all this early or this late uh winter snow in the four corners area of colorado and north of there and moved across the nation so there's been some major crop problems and that has to do with why you're seeing the prices at your grocery store going up it's very interesting these times that we're looking at now if you remember um joseph in the bible that ended up in egypt and he interpreted pharaoh's dream and they talked about it and there were to be seven years of good as far as uh, food, you know, it was an agricultural society, and then seven years of famine. And we've had, we're coming out of the seven years since the um, last major problem we had in 2007, guys, remember when we had to bail out the banks, the housing industry, and uh, all the subprime loans and everything. Well, we had a major inflation at that time, too, because so much of the money was going uh, into uh, the bailouts. Well, a lot of people lost their 401ks, things like that. You remember it. And if you, that's when we were seeing the last peak in the price of food. Now, it's not just the U.S. It's a worldwide weather problem and other, um, other problems that has to do with the worldwide food supply. And in 2020, our exports went up tremendously. And uh, there was a couple countries that was were importing from many places around the world, the two largest countries on the planet. And they have up their uh, imports, much like Egypt was doing during that seven years of plenty. 
And you can study this for yourself. I don't want to go too deep and name any names, but they've been very busy. And the U.S. exports are showing it. In 2020, that peaked. So instead of filling our grain houses, as in the story of Joseph, we've been emptying them. And so have many people in the world. But again, the top two nations are um, on top of this grain gathering. We'll say that. And I want to point out something uh, that you can that makes it kind of obvious of, of what we're seeing. I want to go to CNBC for a minute and look at wheat and what it's trading for. This is for up to May uh, the, of this year at 628. It's down slightly uh, by minus 250. But the chart you're looking at goes back to 2006 up to today. Now, it, this is live again March 19th, 2021 at 12 p.m. Central. 2006, we saw a slight rise in the price of wheat in the it was just trading with the commodities. Then in 2007, we saw the market collapse uh, and a lot of bailouts. Uh, you saw the um, banks bail out, the home builders, home lenders had uh, subprimed themselves to death, and we, the taxpayers, paid the price for it, and they got bailed out. But just remember this, in 2012, 12, they passed a law where the banks bail in now, guys, uh, where you are allocated stock um, from the bank in exchange for your savings and deposits. And, uh, you know, it depends on the value of the bank. And it's not going to be very high if it's in a bail-in situation. But there is a law that now they can do that. But anyway, so for from 2007, we saw inflation. This is indicated in the commodities, what you eat. And this is what we're talking about. This is going to be the important part of uh, what we need to be paying attention to. So 2007 to 2014, we were, it, we were seeing drops, but it was still well above the line that we're seeing now. Now, right here, we're at 630.50, but... Um, it's starting to rise above the point where it dropped after that seven years from 2017 to 2014. Then as the price of wheat dropped, this is just one of the indicators. There's many. Also, you saw oil drop, and that was indicated by a lot of job losses in the oil industry. Uh, rice, soybeans, corn, things like that. But during this time, the prices at the shelf are lower because the price of wheat was lower. A lot of stuff is made out of that, but again, it, it crosses all the commodity lines. So now we're up, up, back up and approaching the 2014 level, which is right there, guys. Can you see it? We're not far from that. We dropped a couple points today, but it's been back on the rise. So as this goes back, it's been seven years, by the way. We're in 2021. So as we're coming out of what you would call the time of plenty and in a certain sense compared to what it's been and what it's going to be, then you're going to see multiple effects that affect this. One is worldwide shortages. Um, two of the largest countries in the world are now importers. In other words, they're stocking their grains. Again, they're stocking their granaries. And um, the U.S. was one of the highest exporters in 2020. It really elevated up during that period. And as we were emptying our granaries. So, again, it, do, it doesn't make sense in your home, on your preparations, and it shouldn't make sense to countries. But uh, if you're trying to get your, you know, your stock up and your things moving and, and kept helping the farmers and things like that, that's what happens. And so you had all of that. You've got um, you got strife around the planet right now. Not not a lot of the countries are getting along very good for for trade and help. And countries are becoming more um, now in the last in this last year. Countries are becoming more, except for the U.S., um, more stingy with their exports of uh, necessities like wheat corn soybeans rice in other words they're building they're building walls to protect their exports but our administration last year was busy doing just the opposite so we're coming back out of this seven years of low prices 
and we're going into a year now of rising prices uh, as far as wheat. This starts in 2020 as in March. We're in March 2021, and it's been a rise that entire this entire year. We saw just a slight dip today, but we're very quickly approaching, guys. Right here is the seven-year level, 630, and that's at 689. So we could see that as more and more uh, information comes out about possible flooding crop damage, freezing crop damage, high wind crop damage, uh, exports versus imports, then this could very quickly rise above 689. You know how that will work. But guys, I want you to be prepared and uh, be prepared for not just a few weeks. Make sure each week you spend a few bucks on uh, some staples, some beans and rice, things like that you can um, seal up, you know, in a vacuum sealer or at least in Ziploc bags and extend the life of them. Be aware of what I'm talking about. We're about to see some problems. The government is not going to be able to continue the bailouts. You know that uh, there's, you know, there's an end to everything. So you're going to be on your own if uh, this thing hits the fan. But again, the levels are rising back up. So you keep an eye on it. We're watching it. You watch it. Prepare. It's a heads up. Be safe.